Hey everybody, Joel at Up North Aquatics. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, this week's video, I think we should revisit pea puffers. I went through like my uh, my video list the other day and I realized that um, by far my video with the most views was when we first got our pea, fu pea puffers. We got a dozen of them about 10 months ago. So um, let's check in with them and I'll tell you everything I've learned since then. All right. So as I said, we've had these guys for 10 months now. Um, my first video started out with 12 of them. Uh, we did a lot of the care requirements, the habitat requirements and such. Um, I'll link that video right here, right now, if you are interested in watching that one first. But this is our 10 month update. Our goal was for one, to get them off of live food, and for two, get them with some tank mates. Um, and uh, here's the update how that all went. Basically, um, getting them off of live food was actually super easy. I would only offer them live food like once a week and um, in the form of bloodworms. And then I started putting vibrabites, Hikari vibrabites in there, which are literally red worm shaped uh, food sticks. So, um, and then slowly but surely, I weaned out the bloodworms and they were just eating the uh, vibrabites. And then from there, they actually transitioned right away onto um, like mini bites or first bites or any small food, like pellet food. Let's see if I can get it on camera, what I'm feeding here, and I'll feed them for you. Yeah, so this is, this is a mixture of cobalt, like fry food, and just like some Hikari, um, the smallest Hikari pellets, like tropical fish pellets. I made the mistake of feeding them earlier, so I don't know if they'll eat for you now, and with the camera in their face, they might not. But they do eat this now, just regular pellets. You can get away with this with the pea puffers because their beaks don't grow like other puffer fish do, so you don't have to feed them live. With other puffer fish, you'd be constantly feeding them snails, frozen shrimp, clams, all sorts of stuff. Here they go, they'll eat some now. Um, yep, so you'll be feeding them live food to keep their beak trimmed. Uh, but with these guys, um, their beaks actually don't grow continuously. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, another kind of successful way to keep them fed that I found is to put adult snails and adult shrimp in the tank. They won't eat adult snails, they won't eat adult shrimp because um, they're too big and they know that. They're smart enough to know that if they go after the adult, they won't be able to kill it or it'll take so much energy to kill it that they won't get that much energy back by eating it, so they just don't do it. But when the shrimp have babies and when the snails have babies, uh, they'll eat the babies. Um, so it is a good way to control that population of shrimp and snails, and it's also perfect for me when I cull my shrimp. Because um, this, this tank actually has about five or six cherry shrimp that aren't quite cherry in color. Um, and they could breed in here and live out the rest of their life in here. And as they breed, they are providing food for the um, puffers as well as the snails. I have like five rams horn snails in here. And I don't know, there might be six or seven now, maybe a couple of them made it to adulthood, but for the most part, they eat them right out of the nest, so. Um, but now they do readily take pellet food. So the next thing we played around with with these guys was tank mates. Um, and I will say, first of all, nothing went horribly wrong, um, but I, I, I used a lot of caution. So I knew off the bat anything slow might be an issue and anything with long fins might be an issue because these guys, puffer fish, can be territorial. And with their sharp beaks, um, if they do get a hold of anything, they're gonna tear it to pieces, like finnage-wise. So I did use like a lot of caution with it, but um, everything that I tried worked which was neon tetras, cardinal tetras, um, and white cloud mountain minnows. And if you know those fish off the top of your head, you'll know that they are schooling fish um, that are fast and that have short fins. So I never witnessed the puffers go after any of them, but I assume if the puffers did, uh, the school of fish would have just scattered um, and been so fast that the puffers wouldn't have been able to get them anyway. Um, 
and the puppers probably would have tried once or twice and then given up once they realized it wasn't worth the waste of energy because they weren't going to catch them. Um, the only reason that they're with nothing else right now is just because I have nothing else to put with them right now. Um, I don't have the Tetras anymore. Um, I've moved on from them and all my white clouds are somewhere along the breeding rack or grow out rack because I've been spawning the heck out of them so I don't really have any extra to put with the puppers. Um, but if you were keeping them as pets, definitely a solid option. Um, you could do a nice schooling setup of white clouds or school of tetras or any fast tetra that you think looks good that has short fins. And use your pea puffers as a um, as the centerpiece fish. You know, everybody thinks it's the coolest thing when you're like, yeah, I got puffer fish, no big deal, you know? <laughs> and uh, they all wanna come see the puffer fish. So um, it, it would almost be like your pet puffer fish and then you'd be like decorating the tank with this school of other just fast colorful fish because this tank is really boring with puffers that's one negative i found with them they are kind of boring they're docile um for the most part once they have like their territories figured out and stuff and they um, stop picking on each other they, they don't really move much they just kind of hang out wait for food to come to them um and they're not they're not fast swimmers so it, it's cool to decorate the tank with a different faster species um so yeah that's that's basically what worked out that that way um and if you're wondering what happened to the other eight um i did lose a couple uh through the course of i'm not sure uh what it was actually but i'm assuming through the course of trying to transition them off live um i might have accidentally starved a couple of them out um but the more likely story is i got these guys shipped in from all the way across the country and they probably just didn't survive the harsh parameter difference because that's super hard water and the area i bought it from is super soft water uh, most of the time when i buy fish from that distributor I, I buy them and i breed them right away and then the generation that's born in my tank does well it's bulletproof but the generation that i get from that distributor um, usually the breeders die off right away um, and I, so I, I think it is just a parameter issue. It's consistent among all species I've gotten from that one particular distributor. Um, so we, we lost a couple, a couple got rehomed. I ended up with four. Um, I think they're two males, two females, because two of them are slender and dark, which would be the males, and two of them are round and lighter in color, which would be the females. And I'm really hoping all this stuff is picking up on camera because they're not moving much and they kind of blend in and this could make for a really boring video. But um, we'll get you a peek at all of them. Uh, that, that is the update. That's everything I figured out uh, for you guys and for myself. Um, and uh, yeah, let's take a look at some of these guys up close if they let you. As you can see that is, I believe, one of my females hanging out in that feeding tube. Feeding, I say feeding tube. It's literally a water bottle hanging in the water where I dropped the food in. Um, so these would be the two females, I believe. Round, light in color. And then the two males are going to be a lot harder to see because they're slender and dark and I lost them with my own eyes already. Um, and they're usually down in this dark area down here. Uh, and being that I just fed, they won't be coming out looking for food. But yeah, the males will just be, oh, there's one. So I would say male, female, female, and uh, one other skinnier, darker male. And if you look at that sponge filter, that's the size shrimp on there that I've been getting to survive with these guys without issue. Um, and like I said, they, they, the shrimp do breed, the snails eat the babies. Uh, it's a way to control the population of my cull shrimp that don't look good and aren't the dark red I want. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's everything I kind of figured out since then. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the update. Like I said, I know the pea puffers were uh, super popular. So um, I don't know, maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't, maybe you enjoyed it, maybe you didn't. But uh, either way, appreciate every single one of you. Uh, super, super appreciate it if you subscribed. And um, we'll see you next week. Have a good week, and thanks for stopping by.